ahead and start the, start the fire. Um, now, how do you want me to roll this? Because I do have the I do have uh, tools to make it easier, and I do have the proficiency as well. You do. So uh, I just want to set the scene right quick. So you got the clearing in the middle with the three goblins in front of the stage, the one goblin with the robe on the stage, and the wyvernling with the chain and the saddle on the stage as well. The other two are in a cage that appears to be closed, by all accounts. Um, okay, that's in the center. To the to the left of the ruins is you, okay, Walzer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start the fire, hoping to spread it towards the ruins. Um, Alistair, you would be beneath or uh, south of the ruins with Old John, okay? Basically, um, Walzer has moved quite a distance to get to the, to the left of the ruins, okay? So you guys aren't within speaking distance anymore. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. So what happens first? Um, unless you guys need to do anything in particular, I'm going to just attempt now, to... Now, Walter, when you get over there, you do see something else. You see that the path continues further past the clearing. You couldn't see it from there because the ruins were in the way. So we you can avoid see. combat altogether? You see that there is a path further through, but it also sounds like the goblins are wrapping up. Alright, I'm going to start the fire then. Okay. I'm going to give me that fire building check. That's not enough. Right, no, you can't. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, Alistair, do you need to do anything? I'm uh, watching him. I'm watching him try and start it, and I think to myself, or oh, maybe I'll be able to go help him. I've got an idea, so I'll. Um, well, yes. Hold on there. The uh, so the goblin on the day stops. Stops. Uh, you know proselytizing or whatever it is he's doing. And uh, he stops speaking. The uh, other three goblins kind of stop bowing and they kind of look at each other. They kind of, you know, smile. They, you know, fist bump or whatever goblins do. And they uh, they kind of stand up and they, you know, he kind of... the one Now, one of the goblins that's closest to you, Walzer, you see that he's got, um, you know, kind of well-kempt well uh, black hair. You can actually get a better look at them. Um, so, yeah, the leftmost goblin has spotted and sickly um, he, uh, skin. Uh, he's wearing studded leather that's clearly been sized to fit him. Um, he has uh, a mace strapped to his back. Mm. Uh, the middle goblin's hair is a stark gray, and uh, he has kind of gilded chips on pauldrons on his sh uh, shoulders. Um, the goblin's silver hair is tucked into his armor in a ponytail. Um, he's got a short sword on his left hip. And the rightmost goblin is nearly bald, uh, appears female, um, appears though its head was shaved. Um, and it's got about, it's got two baldricks that go from shoulder to hip, two of them that have knives stuck in them, more than ten at least. Yeah, it's a pretty well armored. Yeah, I wouldn't want to tangle with them. And I don't think a wizard and an old man would want to tangle with them either. Um... Alright, uh, <clears throat> can I do another check? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> oh, fucking... Okay, <laughs> I'm going to put a mark by that one too, remember? Okay. Alright, there we go. Uh, yeah, you start the fire, and almost immediately it like, spreads halfway towards the ruins. And, uh, so you guys, it looks like, looks like, like a napalm strike. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Shit! Just the dry winds just have, yeah. Tall grass just goes up in flames, and I would like uh, you guys to roll initiative. <clears throat> Absolutely. So that's your weapon speed, so whatever you yeah. plan on doing first, I guess, Luke. Uh, the goblins will most likely go last. That's 20 for them. Oh, damn. Do they, um... <clears throat> so, I I'm curious as to, uh... Because this is a really fast-acting fire, by the sounds of it. Yep. And I've seen bushfires before, and it's they're scary, man. Like it's, I, I'm assuming that they wouldn't have much chance to react to anything if at if at all. How far away am I from them when I set the fire? By the way. About forty feet. That's not that far. 
So uh, by next round, it's going to be around the ruins, but there there's a stone stage, so it's not going to like burn the stage. It's going to get hot though. Yeah. All right. And so what is? What, are the fires going to get there? Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. In fact, probably. In fact, uh, it's going to go on your initiative. So I mean, it'll probably get there before they act. Nice. Fantastic. All but right. uh, yeah. So Walter, I have here uh, eighteen. Yeah, that's right. And Alistair eight. And old John. Goblins. Okay, twenty-six. Alistair, what do you do? All right. Well, um, hmm. Well, first up, I've, we've still got a fair bit of distance to go to. Uh, how's the uh, fire moving into relationship? Uh, into relation where old John and I are. Um, so it's, it's spreading in all directions, the fire is. Um, so the, the ruin is 40 feet away from Walzer. Uh, you are 60 feet away from the stage. Or the ruins. All right. Okay. So if anything, two rounds from now, the fire is going to get to kind of where you are. But you, you can just go further back, and there's no grass there, so you'll be all right. All right, yeah, well, um... There's no point putting ourselves into, well, at least I think to myself, there's no point putting myself into more danger initiating now. Let's just see how, what they do with the fire. So I'll maybe just um, get back a bit and then start coming to around to where uh, Walzer is, so kind of like circling around, I suppose. Yeah, I honestly thought you would have come with me when I set the fire, but... Yeah. Sorry. Uh, hey, man, you're just, you're just doing your own thing. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> All right, um, Walzer will go then. Nice. Um, so I guess I'll. Well, there's not much I can do right now. I'll watch the fire for, for the most yeah. part. Um, if it looks I like, like it's going to die people. down though, for any reason, which I hope it doesn't, because I rolled a one. Um, you don't think? All right, cool. Then I'll I'll just sort of hang out there. Yeah, you hang out there. The fire continues to spread. Uh, very quickly, as if the gods themselves once sees goblins burn, <laughs> and the yeah, like the the fire consumes the grasses and it goes around the the ruins, eating up all the grass around there. Um, the goblins are basically stuck in this circle of flame. So um, all of them managed to jump up onto the stage. No, but the the grasses they they were kind of not they weren't kneeling in the grass, so. Um, but they're basically pinned up against the stage. So, how tall are these flames, out of curiosity? How tall are the flames? Taller than the goblins. Okay. And, um... How are we doing for oxygen inside of this circle? Because I assume there would be very little. Talking about them, or talking about you? Them. Um... Well, the fact that a, a round lasts all of about six seconds, they, they'll probably be fine. Okay. Um... All right. I was hoping that either the flames would get them, or they would either suffocate, or run out of oxygen, or pass out, or something like that. Was, Even if they don't get burned. Yeah. I guess they could, but that'd be a, a, like a fair few rounds for them in order to start really feeling those effects. Yeah, sure. and they'll okay. get a few rounds first. Um, um, in fact, uh, the next thing that happened is Old John will uh, do the same. He will kind of have his. Uh, he will kind of move to the right a little bit. Um, Maybe try to get a better vantage point, but uh, he won't do anything either. Um, the goblins, however, um, so the the goblin that is on the dais, the when the one with the purple um, robe, mm -hmm. uh, the first thing he's going to do is he's going to look around, and uh, he you know he's kind of he's going to make a check though because he can't really can't see over the flames very well, but so he's going to try and see walls or basically or where the fire came from essentially, because he didn't notice where it came from. Okay. Um, yeah, when he, when he looks up uh, in Walzer's direction, um, basically a flame, you know, goes or whatever, and he has to shield his eyes, he can't see. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Um, however, he does, um, at least Alistair can see that he says something, um, and he basically throws his uh, one hand and his staff up into the heavens, and then he will point his staff towards uh, basically the opposite area of where Walzer is at, 
and then he will basically scan the area around him with his staff out. Do right? you mean like if I'm west of them, he points it east of me? He points it east of you and then moves it, and basically turns in a complete circle. Okay. Okay. The next thing that happens is the other three goblins will attempt to, uh, to scramble up onto the onto the stage. Okay. Um, the young goblin with the mace uh, will make it up within the within the round. Neither will the old one. The shaved female also will not make it up to the top of the round. This mean green dice all, only rolls high, so they all. <laughs> um, anywho, they are trying to scramble their way up onto the. Uh, uh, they're trying to scramble their way up to the stage. The rogue goblin is basically, he's scanning around. He's basically, you know, saying saying something in goblinoid and, like, stepping on their fingers. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> trying to, like, point, like, something like, go get them, or trying to figure out what's going on kind of thing. Okay. But they're not able to get up on the dais, and they're in big trouble. Um, the next thing that happens is that... Uh, the uh, so the wyverns in the cage are basically freaking out. They're they're screaming and making their making their barking noises. Um, they're feeling the they're feeling the heat. The iron is heating up of the of the cage, and they're basically going to be you know cooked inside. If they don't Good get out of here. thrashing up against the the cage. Um, and the wyvern on the stage is uh, he is stood up on his two legs, and he's got you know two legs and two wings as as they all do, and. Uh, um, he will make his make his way towards his master, as far as you can tell, his master. And uh, then it is uh, Alistair's turn again. All right. Hmm. Just trying to think. Like the uh, the fire is pretty crazy. There's not too much we really can do to. Uh... Hmm. All right. Let's just think. Oh, uh, I want to remind you. I also want to say that when he was pointing, like "go get them," he was pointing um, at Alistair and at Walzer, pointing in your exact directions. So, oh, all right. Is there any way to know, like, is there any way to know that he knows that we're there, or is he just sort of assuming that's where the fire came from? Uh, he pointed at, at you and at Alistair and Old John. Um, okay. Uh, you probably wouldn't know, not with your skills, but. Uh, uh, I bet Alistair would probably know. Like, Alistair, give me a Tactics of Magic roll. Alright. Boop. Uh, nothing. It's too hot. Yeah. Um, well, you, basically... Your best guess is as, as good as Alistair's. Mm. Yeah. He's just simply pointing at the source of the thing and whether or not he's seen us, we don't know. Mm. Um, mm. So you were making your way out to me, right? I think, uh, yeah, we're still going. Is there anything you can do maybe to push him off the dais? Hmm. I mean, I probably could, uh, I could strike him with a magic missile and hopefully that might... Uh, knock him off. Mm. It's probably not worth using a magic missile if you've only got two for the day. Mm, exactly. But maybe if you had like a cantrip or something like that. I don't know. <clears throat> uh, looking at my cantrips... Uh... Alright. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I think I know what he's laughing about. <laughs> I put a spider on his uh... eyeball. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, let's, um, let's add to the <laughs> chaos. <laughs> Maybe not necessarily on his eyeball, but let's just say, let's just, mm -hmm. um, let's just make a spider, let's see if I can uh, conjure a spider to appear on, on the, uh, robed goblin. Okay, I'm going to make an attack roll. Um, alright. Do spiders have health for a cantrip? This, this thing is, it's, this it's, thing it's, is very it's literally a spider. A Okay, so you can't, like, maybe make it jump through fire and then jump on it or something like that? No. No? no. Okay. I mean, well, I guess I could... No, make no, Make a no, flaming no. spider to... corpse hit a goblin shaman in the face or something like that? Well, it'd take a few turns, but I guess what I could have done 
is made the spider in my hand and used a cantrip called change to turn it into a fiery spider and thrown it, but <laughs> <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, I think that's a lot of use for something that's, you know, may not be that effective. Sure. All right. Um, so a attack roll, that's, sorry, I'm still kind of really... D20, if that go 20, it's got, it's AC, we're going to subtract that and that's the target number. All right. So you need a higher nice. higher on this to hit. Hmm. Okay, so I'll just do a normal D20 then. It's always oh. just a D20. There we go. Nice. Oh, yeah. The spider, yeah, it basically, you know, you think of it, you snap your fingers and say whatever it is you say, and uh, <laughs> you see the the robot goblin. Uh, yeah, the robot goblin basically, well, he'll act on his turn. We'll see what happens on his turn. But, uh, yep. Walter, do you want to do anything? Um... Oh, he's already seen me now, and I've seen that he's seen me for the most part. Or at least I, he's pointed in my direction, so I have some inkling that he knows where I am. How far down is it safe to walk with the fire? Um, probably not any closer than you already are. All right, I'll just stay there, and I'll just sort of like maybe I'll admire just my handiwork. Yeah, yeah, admire my handiwork. Yeah. Uh, old John will do the same. He's kind of looking at you. He's like. He's kind of looking at Alistair, kind of mouth agape. Yeah. He's very impressed. Um, he should be. <laughs> yeah. The goblins. The goblin shaman will begin to kind of swat at his, at his face and basically try to locate the spider and knock it off. He's not going to be able to do anything special on his action besides trying to get the spider off. All right. Um, he will fail to do so. So the spider will remain, and it's basically gotten into its mouth, and he's trying to spit it out. But. <laughs> oh, oh, damn. <laughs> and, and to a uh, goblin, the spider would be pretty big, right? It would be bigger. Yeah. Uh, the, the large wyvernling that's chained up will attempt to forcibly... He'll basically try to force the goblin shaman to, to mount, to basically get on him, he's trying to take him away. Um, because if you remember, the Wyverlings do have some kind of rudimentary intelligence. So that's interesting that it's for, um, presenting mm. loyalty, that it's not just trying to escape, it's actually trying yeah, to... Yeah, I, I thought that maybe in the confusion he would have tried to attack his master, maybe. Oh, that's interesting. Well, who knows? Yeah, that's interesting. Perhaps you don't have all the information. Yeah. Yeah, we don't. Um, all right. The Okay, yeah. The So the Wyverling will basically put its head in between the goblin's stubby legs. And the the goblin spider in mouth uh, will tumble down and kind of be sprawled over the saddle of the wyvernling, the the poorly affixed pony saddle. Um, secondly, the other wyvernlings in the cage will continue to thrash about. They can't do anything. Uh, the other three uh, goblins will once again try to get up on the stage. Uh, the black-haired goblin with the mace on its back will clamber up onto the stage. The other two will not. Um, so nothing happened on my turn with the fire? You didn't get closer or do anything? But like I said, the basically... Uh, I guess that's true. Yeah, the two... So the two that didn't make it into the fire will take... Basically, their... The cloth that they do have on them will begin to... will ignite and will begin to burn. Okay. Dang. But the, but the one that didn't get up on the stage is safe for the time being, anyway. Okay. Um... Alistair, something else? Um, let's see. You killed you a goblin I, shaman by making him choke on a spider, man. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> if, I mean, I could try and... Um, if you don't do something about it, the Wyvernling will most likely take off. Wait, isn't I mean, it chained down? Didn't you say it was chained? Uh, no, it's, it was chained to the goblin's forearm. Ah. Ah, okay, that's interesting. Hmm, okay. Interesting. All right. Um, hmm. Can you do something to the chain, maybe? Yeah, I, I think I might be able to do. Oh, so. uh, you know that, not to the chain. You know that magic missile can't target objects or inanimate objects. Yeah, it can only target living objects, right? Yeah. yeah. Can Creatures. you can you target his hand where the chain is strapped to, and maybe try and like break the chain there? Interesting idea. I mean, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll give that to you. I'll give that to you if you want to make a call shot. And I'll, no, it, it's going to hit him regardless, but if you want to try to hit a specific part, 
We're going to make an attack roll. Up to you, man. you got two magic missiles. It's, if you want to save them or whatnot, it's fine. I mean, at, at most, he'll, he'll like, fly around on this wagon and probably throw spells at us, so... Um, yeah, that's no good. Hmm. Um, so he sprawled on the back of the wyvern. Uh, <clears throat> so the wyvern has like its wings out, I suppose. It's kind of getting ready to. Yeah. You think you can something about it? He's going to take off and maybe glide his master to safety. Damn. Uh, you think the other three goblins are pretty much done for? <laughs> except yeah, I'd, except for maybe the one on the stage already. Yeah, it looks like he might. Uh, would the, would the dais get hot? Um, not this quick, no. Okay, yeah. It's a big, big, big dais. It's a big piece of stone, you know. Yeah. It'll absorb a lot of heat. Yeah. Damn, it's a shame that his wings are out. Um, hmm. <clears throat> Alright, I might uh, shoot a magic missile, but what I might try to do is uh, shoot the wyvern, but kind of like roughly where the uh, pony stuff, or the, the pony saddle is attached, so maybe shoot the wyvern, but call it so that it'll uh, maybe hit it in the thing and maybe undo a strap on the... He's, um, he's connected to the wyvern by the chain, though. Oh, it's the chain, is it? Yeah. Like, he's got it around his wrist, and I assume it's like a bridle then or something. It's, it's, like around, it's around its neck, yeah. Yeah. Plus, you know, it can't hurt, like, even if you miss the cold shot, you'll still hit the wizard. So, like, that's not a big deal. Up to you, though. I'll stay out of it now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... You're shouting moves at him. Yeah, yeah sorry, I'm really bad yeah, at that sort of stuff. This, this is a really in-depth shouted conversation. <laughs> No, I'm going to try and shoot the wyvern um, in the body and uh, at least try to control it so that it might hit one of the uh, straps of the the saddle. Because, yeah, if we can dislodge the saddle, then the uh, the goblin will have a very hard time staying on. All right, I'm going to so. force you make an attack roll on that with the call shot penalty still minus four. Okay. So just, just roll the attack roll and we'll see what happens. Just roll 1d20 and I'll, I'll apply the modifiers in my head. Oh, God. Yeah, so the magic missile use is expended. It's stricken from your memory. One, one use of it is. And the magic missile basically flies through the flames. The thermal updraft of the flames causes it to go haywire. And it just flies off into who knows where. Damn. So if he got a one on that, at least, it would have hit? No, he needs high on those attack rolls. Oh, okay. So if you do a cold shot, even with the magic missile, you still need to pass AC? You still need to hit him, yeah. Okay. For that. If it was just a, if, just a, if he just wanted to hit it, magic missile always hits. But because he was trying, he was concentrating too hard, basically the, when he formed the magic, you know, technical magic stuff, that I would expect the blacksmith to understand. Oh, okay. But, uh, I'm just like, oh, uh, pretty light. I like it. <laughs> It's no uh, levitate spell, though, but you're a fucking whatever. <laughs> Walter, what do you want to do? Uh, well, there's nothing I can do. I can I can give him the stink eye, maybe. Uh, <laughs> do I roll to attack? Was that a d20 plus 12? Something like that? Was that stink eye? Yeah, stink eye, yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's right. I stand there, and I just, I just look happy as shit that these goblins are burning to pieces. And I'm even more happy that these wyverns are burning to pieces inside the cage. Um, so there's that, yeah. Yep. Uh, old John will continue to watch the carnage as the goblins do like a three stooges kind of routine still. Um, the gob the wyvern will. Oh, sorry, the notes. fire does its thing again, whatever it's doing. Uh, yeah, basically, the, the fire continues to go all the way to the other side of the clearing. And, um,. Other than that, it doesn't doesn't grow or it's not stoked by anything besides the wind. Um, but the oh yeah, the goblins that, that were on fire are now basically completely consumed in flames, and they're you know running around in a circle now, <laughs> screaming in high pitched voices. So there's only the two. There's basically only two things left: the guy on top of the dais and the guy, the wyvern, riding. With its rider. Yeah. The okay. wyvern with its rider will take off um, with the. Goblin Shaman, roughly on his back, 
Um, he has since swallowed the spider it was by tough. accident, but through no fault of his own. Um, <laughs> and he is now basically holding on. Uh, he's righted himself on the saddle, and the the wyvern takes off. Um, the shaman, however, lets his chain lets the chain go down and dangle, where the other goblin attempts to grab the chain. <laughs> Um, the other <laughs> goblin, let's see, that might be good enough. Oh man, that's great. <laughs> Fucking goblins, man. <laughs> the, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. This goblin very dexterously grabs hold of the chain as the wyverling is strong enough to hold him and the, the rider. Damn. And he basically <laughs> takes off and begins to fly over the flames uh, towards Alistair and towards Old John. That direction. Um, Ooh. and they're, they flying, they don't get very much higher off the ground as the, uh, the, the flames lick at the feet of the goblin that's dangling from the chain now. Um, but they make their way over to, essentially within melee range of old John and Alistair in that round. And then Alistair, what do you want to do? <laughs> um, let's see. Shenanigans. Spider number two. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, man. Can you magically see inside of the uh, the shaman's stomach now? Because I wonder if I could. Yes. Yeah, send <laughs> Well, yes. Yeah, sending a command to the spider to bite, but like you know, he's not really like the wyvern's flying it, so causing that person uncomfortability would affect his spells and stuff. I guess if you wanted to throw some. <laughs> <laughs> eat, eat from the inside out, Spider. Do it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Damn. I can't think of too much that I could conceivably do. All right, so they're they're basically pretty much fl uh, flying right on top of us now. Yeah, I mean the, the wyvern can't fly very well uh, as far as height is concerned, but it can certainly fly up and glide down. So it's yeah, it's. Over your head. The the goblin is basically right over your head. The wyvern is is you know within full arm extension. Um, I'm not All sure right, if I'm, I'm the right person to... to ask about this, but would there be any sort of like pen like updraft or anything like that from flying over fire that close? Or uh, yeah, you imagine you got some lift off of that. That's why I was able to get away. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So it's just above my head. I'm just gonna, on reflex, just try and. Um... Oh god, why am I going to do this? I'm going to go and grab the goblin's feet. Let's uh, see if I can... Let's, uh, so this, this is going to be a contest. This is going to be your dexterity versus its. Alright. I like it. Don't kill yourself though, but I like so it. <laughs> whoever passes the best wins. Okay. Uh, whoever gets close to passing. Are you, are you able to do this roll on roll 20 for us, Graham? I can. <laughs> This guy, right. as I mentioned before, is very dexterous, however. Oh. Alright, so here, I'll just roll. roll a... Yeah, it's d20, your dexterity is 13. Wow. <laughs> so you pass by, uh, what is that, 7? Yeah. Yep. Um, the goblin passes by 8. He has dexterity 16. Damn. That's pretty close, nice, then. Yep. The goblin, you basically grab his foot, he kicks you off, you grab, you grab his foot, other foot with your other hand, and he kicks that one off, too, and he spits at you. Oh! Put into your that. inventory, two goblin shoes. <laughs> <My friend. laughs> uh. All right. Um, that was Alistair Walzer. Anything for you? The, the fire is kind of spread through, kind of burned up all the grass near you, so you can move about if you want to. I assume since Alistair was able to, what, jump and strike or grab this thing, did he have to jump or did he just grab him? No, he just he put his hand up. Right, I'm gonna smack, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pierce it with the, the spear part of the of the Lucerne into his guts, if at all possible. You were about 40 feet away from them, oh, so, yeah, you'll, yeah, yeah. so you, you'll, you'll have to basically, you can make it, so you, you'll charge and basically spear out as like an all pike, you know, like a basically charging at it and trying to get it. You're basically, you see it take off. This is what happens. Yeah. You see it take off. You see it's going to go that way. You basically charge parallel to it, trying to form a point 
to it. You see, before you get there, Alistair tries to grab its feet. It misses. And then, uh, basically, Wolzer comes up from behind Alistair and attempts to pierce it with his hammer. If, if I'm able to pierce the guy hanging on, am right. I able to Just pierce... Am I able to pierce the actual, like, wyvern? Because your weapon has breach, yes. Let's do the wyvern. Okay. Attack roll. No, you need high on attack rolls, remember? Ah, oh, no! Ah, oh, no. Yeah, the, I uh, jump and I miss. I'm like, ah! Yeah, <laughs> because, uh... Because the wyvern sensed that uh, Alistair was coming up to grab him as far as he knew mm. um he kind of he banked to the left a little bit uh just away from your spike that he went to Damn. um but i made well, it i made it all the way there in one turn and attacked yeah all right cool as george old john is there also however he will also take a strike at the uh he'll take a strike at the goblin with his pitchfork out don't fucking outdo me old john i swear to god <laughs> um, don't let's... fucking outdo me with the goblin, um, uh, old John will, um, he'll tag the goblin, let's see, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll get a good shot in at the goblin's, uh, abdomen, he's able to reach all the way there, and, uh, we'll basically, he'll unclasp one of the goblin's, uh, you know, pieces of armor, and it will it will fall off and land on the ground, and, but the goblin is safe for the time being, he, he he's nicked it, but, alas, Man, I just um, have this image of like this fucking goblin hanging off this wyvern who's struggling yeah, to fly, fight, uh, and his pants are like falling off from like our attacks <laughs> and stuff, and he's just like <laughs> this half naked goblin just being like, ah shit! <laughs> and of course the goblins and the goblin on the thing, yeah. And of course the goblin on the thing are you know cursing at you and and. Yelling at each other and yelling at the river go faster and yelling at you at the ground like get off me and goblinoid obviously the goblins however will they'll continue to fly they can fly faster or as far as you know the goblins can uh, or the wyvern can fly faster than you can run and so the goblin will glide over all of your heads um, yeah his pants fall off and like my knife face <laughs> and uh, the, goblins, the goblins will glide down the further down the mountain. Um, you can certainly right. throw something at it this turn, but the next turn they're gonna they're gonna get away. So, Alistair, do you want to do something? Damn. Let's see. Well, uh, it'd be very much of a long shot. I don't really want to use up my second magic missile to have to try and do something. It looks like those two might have gotten away. I think. Uh. Three. Yeah, no, I'm just gonna just kind of kind of watch them fly away, and then just uh, check around to observe the the carnage, I suppose, the chaos. Walls or anything? Yeah, am I allowed to make one more strike at the uh, wyvern? Uh, no, they on their turn they move far away from you. Okay. Uh, farther away than you could charge in one in one turn. Fair enough. Fair enough. And. Um, all right, <clears throat> so uh, I guess I kind of stand there, and I, I want to try and see if they're going to turn back at all, or if they're actually heading off and running away completely. That's fine. Old John will, uh, you know, say in a very Jack Bauer manner, "Damn it!" and uh, <laughs> and he will throw his fork down to the ground. And the on the goblins' turn, they will kind of they will bank to the left and glide further down the mountain around the corner. Mm. Maybe one of the uh, toasty goblins would be able to tell us something if they're not already dead. Wait, no, they can't speak English. What am I saying? Forget me. We don't know that. Well, you already don't know that. But I need to take a bathroom break again, right quick. All right, so no we're worries. gonna we're gonna take a five minute break here. It's a nice it's a nice place to do it. So we'll be back in about three to five minutes. Don't go anywhere. Later.